Welcome to the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist for a time of building and expanding the Kingdom of God within you. We are educating and equipping individuals around the world to build and expand in their dreams, goals, visions, purpose, and destiny through biblical principles and applications. I am your host, Apostle Deron Shay Zorn, your kingdom strategist, here to release strategies and revelations to unlock the kingdom within you. Hello, hello. We want to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another dynamic episode of the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist. I'm so excited that you are here with us on today. In this episode of the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist, we have a very special guest. We have a very special guest. And I'm telling you, you want to know how she is showing up right um, in the marketplace, in the world with her gifts, her talent, all in which God has given unto her. She is very absolutely amazing. And I can't wait until you get the opportunity to meet her on today. We have none other than Miss Jacqueline Lulu Brown uh, from the Revolution Ascension. She is the CEO taking care of business as they are helping professional women transform, heal, and learn so that they can ascend. And so I'm excited about that. I'm always excited about individuals that's, that's excelling, right, in ascending in the things that God has given unto them. So we're excited that she provide an amazing space so that women can move past barriers and limitations that have been keeping them from rising to the top and being everything that God has chosen for them to be. So I'm going to let you uh, get to be, get to know her better in a little bit because we got to go to prayer. Don't forget to share this episode on your social media platforms and along with those in your circle of influence. Because this is an episode that they need to get in on the conversation. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this moment, this time, and this opportunity. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you are the King of glory, the one and only true living God. Father, we thank you um, for this broadcast, and we thank you for the great works that is going to manifest through it. We thank you for using us as vessels to give your children what it is that they need in this hour so that they can grow and mature in the very things in which you have called forth in their lives. We thank you, Lord God, that this is a moment in time for Jeremiah 29 and 11 to be activated even greater within every single listener and viewer of this broadcast. How we thank you for their gifts and their talents. And we thank you, Lord God, from minds opening, spirits awakening, lives being transformed, atmospheres changing, so that your word can manifest in the lives of your dear beloved. You are so amazing, and we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Um, to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. I'm excited um, about today's episode. Listen, you can also connect with us. You can connect with us here on the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist on our social media platforms at Kingdom Strategist. And we would like to also thank our sponsors for today. We want to thank D Technology that provides solutions for your business needs. You can go ahead and visit them at www.dtechnology.com. Again, that is www.dtechnology.com. 
www.technologyweb.com. We look forward to them taking care of your business needs. Let them know that you heard from them right here on the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategies. <laughs> you guys, we look forward to this episode. So let me go ahead and bring our very special guest in. Um, you guys been waiting for her. I know you're at the edge of your, your seats and minds are just in anticipation of this amazing a woman of God here on, on today. So let me go ahead and bring welcome. Welcome, welcome, um, Ms. Lulu, with being for being here with us on today. So, how are you? I am doing I'm fantastic. Doing well. Thank you so much. I am so honored to be here with you, Dr. Duranche. Thank you so much. It is a honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Awesome. It is also an honor and a pleasure to be here with you as well as to share your gifts and, and what it all that you bring um, to a global audience, mm -hmm. uh, to a global audience um, for such a time as this. So I'm excited about that. Go ahead and say hello. Go ahead and greet the listeners on today and viewers on today. I greet you today and I am bringing and sending peace, love, grace, flow in the spirit of the true and living God. And for me, our savior, Jesus Christ. So we can't do anything without God at the head of our lives. So I'm honored to be here with you because I love the kingdom strategist because when we strategize from a kingdom perspective, there is no stopping us. And as I often say, there is no sky and there are no limits except the ones that we set for ourselves. So thank you so much. And I just greet everyone and I'm so happy to be here today. Oh, I absolutely love it. There's no limits <laughs> besides no. the ones that <laughs> you place on right. yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let's get ready to rise. <laughs> Oh, listen. Okay, so I gotta let you just know a little bit more about this amazing woman. So, um, Miss Jacqueline, let us know where where you're from and some general information about yourself. What it is that you do and why do you do what you do every day? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the first part, and I want to get to why I do what I do because there's the passion. I am originally from a city called Bridgeport in the state of Connecticut. I was born and raised there and I'm now in Stockbridge, Georgia. But I spent, um, I'm gonna say the majority of my entire life in the state of Connecticut, working in the state of Connecticut. I was in information technology, software quality engineering for 40 plus years really. And all along, I always, my passion was ministry. And so for the last 25 years, and maybe a little more, but mainly for the last 25 years, um, ministry is where my zone of genius is. And I say that because we have our zones of excellence. And I tell women that you show up, you go to work every day, you soar, and there are world standards that people measure success. Um, they do that by your position, the title, your role, how many people report to you, what's the scope of your responsibility. Um, they also measure you by, well, what's the budget? You know, how big of a budget have you ever been responsible for? How many people? And there's this measurement of standard. And then there's this, um, what is more of a monetary, um, well, what's your salary range and what's the square footage of your home and what kind of car do you drive? These are things that are world systematic things that measure and try to um, define one's success. But our true success is when we show up in our genius zone. And our genius zone is really what's down on the inside of us. Those are the God-given gifts. Now, some people may say creator. I say God, I know you say God. Somebody may say um, Allah, somebody may say Adonai, but they are these God-given gifts down on the inside of us. 
And it is those gifts, that's the zone of genius that we want to tap into. We can show up in excellence, Dr. Jaranche, um, based on our education, our degrees, how we have mastered our, um, our work and our careers, but your zone, that's excellence. And believe it or not, it is really not that hard to show up in excellence. It's your work ethic. It's your, your level of integrity. But when you're showing up in your genius, that's sort of like a unique, crazy place that God has given us with some special gifts, talents, and abilities. So for me, that is what I do with women. I help them to come through an awakening. And that awakening is really kind of waking up out of this um, world system mindset that we've been sort of shaped and molded in from the time that we went to school. There's you know, kind of like a, a certain um, uh, hierarchy and a certain box that people put us in. And moving and waking up away from a worldly systematic um, way of thinking and just waking up to who we are in our genius. And authenticity, a lot of times is an over abused word because people think authenticity means I show up looking how I really want to look, or I say what I really feel. But authenticity, the authenticity that I'm talking about is who we are as individuals at our core, at our essence. And that authenticity came from our God. It is all of the gifting and the brilliance and the genius that is down on the inside. And it is going to the next phase of awakening that. And when we awaken that, then we go through some transformation. And at that point, we're tapping into the real superpowers. People say, well, what's your superpower? The real superpower is that genius in there. It was put in us when we were in our mom's womb. And when we came into the world, we have to tap into it. We have to delve into it. And we just need to bring it forth and let it birth and transform from being conformed to this world system and being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And at that point, we are ascending to a place where there is no sky and there are no limits. And that right there, that is my passion. And that is what I take women through. And I love every single bit of it. That is what I want to be remembered for most when we all know that we will leave this world when I leave this world, I want to be remembered for the person that helped other women find that bright, shining light on the inside that sings with melody to their soul. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> you did. I absolutely love it. I mean, you said so much in there. But listen, with all that you do and all the transformation that you bring forth in the lives of women, listen, let everyone know what is the name of your business. All right. Give us the name of your business and just how. And we just kind of heard how it is transforming lives in the world. So Revolution Ascension, LLC. And Revolution Ascension, the name itself, came about with a burning passion that I had for women in the kingdom, in the church. So Revolution Ascension was birthed with the um, objective to revolutionize the way that we educate and the way that we meet the needs of women in the church, in our religious institutions, in um, our spiritual, I'll say spiritual um, uh, organizations, um, our churches. Um, we know that there are many names 
um, that people have for any type of religious institution. But Revolution Ascension is to revolutionize and not and help women not to be um, so conformed to, I'll say, rituals in religion, but to be truly set free in operating in the freedom that God has given us. So that's Revolution Ascension. We have um, the Ascension Academy. We have retreats and we have one-on-one -on -one VIP um, coaching. And then we also have women's empowerment consulting, which is different from the coaching. The women's empowerment consulting is more around working with women in leadership. And our main passion is women in leadership in again, um, the church, uh, religious institutions, spiritual groups, um, groups where people really want to lead and lead well. That doesn't take away from uh, professional development and professional leadership. But whether you're in corporate America or whether you're in your church or in your community, wherever you are, there's leadership. And there is leading from your divine feminine, who we are created as. So there's a great emphasis on leading from that place and not necessarily leading from, again, sort of the institutions that have shaped and molded us, but leading from your authentic place at your core. So that's kind of revolution ascension outcomes. The outcomes that our clients see, um, one, they actually discover far more about themselves than they knew before. They actually discover and tap into their gifts and their talents. And they understand how to operate from that divine place and navigate the waters while we are yet in this world. Because we know that we're in this world. And there are some things that we know that we're going to go through and we know that we're operating within a system. But knowing how to navigate within that system and not lose who we are or who we were created to be, not losing the purpose that we are here. So discovering that, not losing it and going through whatever the transformation is, People have different needs and people are transforming in different ways. One person may need to transform in an area that another may not. And then the other person may need to transform in a different area. But that's the work that we do pretty much in a nutshell. Awesome. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. You know, I have so many um things to you know talk about and deal with here. You said again, you said quite a bit here. So when you, you talked about being authentic, or right, being authentic, you know, it's tailor made, I think it's very important that we operate and we move according to God's design for our lives. Um, we're not able to really um, function appropriately or or excel in any space that we're in if we're not able to be free. Right. If we're not free and to operate in our gifts, our talents, um, to just move in who we have been created. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we begin to function like robots. <laughs> we function like robots and then we live lives that are miserable. Yes, absolutely miserable. So I have, do have this question. How important is it um, to meet the needs of women? Right. Um, whether it's a um, religious institution or a professional institution. OK, so I'm going to start with a cliche. And you probably often heard people say the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Now, for women, that is very true. And that doesn't mean that you have to be someone that has actually given birth. As women, we are divinely created, and it's not. This is not to bash men or make men less than. 
but I'm going to stay focused on women. We are definitely the special apple of our creator's eye, regardless of whether you call um, God or Allah or Adonai or Yahweh. We know that there are many names for God. We know there are many names for our creator, but we are the apple. We are that great um, gift that has been given to the world. So when we think about the way that a lot of times we have been taught, sometimes we're taught that we are less than men and we're behind and we were created last. And, and those are really not true. We are a strength. We are leaders. We are um, nurturers. And there are special gifts and abilities that were given to us. Scientifically, we, you hear them say that women multitask and we do all these different things. Well, scientifically, we operate and we can transfer, I'm going to say, data and information and the tasks that we're working on across both hemispheres of our brain, left and right. We have those abilities. There have been science and study, and I say this from a perspective of someone that was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and someone that has been diagnosed with having a stroke. And I went on a path to really understand everything that I needed to understand about the brain and attended and had some of the best doctors, um, literally, um, I'm going to say in, in, in the United States. And through that learning and being a patient of Dr. Amen in the Amen Clinic, and as well as other um, neuroscientists, which is a little different than a neurologist. They're both doctors, but one operates with a lot of the science of the brain. Having said that, some of the things that I learned that are unique to us as women from creation, and that makes us have these abilities and we have to make sure that we are tapping into those abilities. So it's really important for us to one, understand the power that we have been given, the importance of our um, influence in our leadership and leadership can be in many different roles. You're a leader in your home. And that's not to take away from saying that um, in our homes, um, the man may not be in a headship. You know, he he's the head. That's not to take that away and, and for us to set ourselves above men, but we are also not beneath men either. So that is something that is very, very important for us to be focused on. Because when we talk about being free, well, you're not free if someone is constantly telling you that you're beneath and you're under and you are not, um, it, you don't have a, a, a right to be in a certain place or a certain position. We are some very powerful beings. And when we tap into the divine part of God that, and we allow that to come forth, that is where we make tremendous impact, tremendous. Absolutely. I absolutely um, love that. Um, and especially with that place of understanding or the mindset that, you know, that we we are not beneath or in a place um, where oppression, right? Oppression suppress That's the right. gifts, you know, um, that are there. And that when we can come into, um, you know, that space or have space or live in space um, when and around individuals that understand our brilliance, our greatness right. as well, that, um, that they can, the whole environment can capitalize right, on the giftings that, that, um, that God have just created women with. 
And so, you know, we're here as, you know, and help me, right? Help me to, you know, um, to others, you know, to, especially to, to our spouses and things of that nature. But, you know, just to the, to the world, you know, we have, God has given us what he's given us so that um, we can bring forth um, greatness, you know, within a society. And so it's, it's very important that our atmospheres also cultivate, right? Cultivate that greatness um, that God has placed on the inside of us. Cultivate it, encourage it, um, nurture it, <laughs> you know, um, as well, because when, and especially when in our households and in communities that we are in, um, in ministry and in business, um, as and um, if if one could understand, right, um, how to, you know, just just leverage what God has given or placed inside of of a woman, I just believe that we're we're able to build better communities, better cities, better states, um, a, a better world. Um, and surely because guess what? In our homes, right? Uh, we definitely have um, great flourishing, you know, homes as well. Once we um, can come into a a place of oneness, yes, as, a, a, and accept everyone, you know, what I'm saying for who they are. And and I love it that listen um, when you talked about the headship headship and leadership, um, those, you know, two different types of things that's happening um, as well. So that's that's something else that we have to, you know, what I'm saying also be mindful of. Yes, you know, um, in, in the hierarchy of things, you know, a, a man is, you know, the head of the house. However, it doesn't mean that the woman is absent, <laughs> right, of the risk of, of doing her portion with, within you know, within the home and not having a equal, right, equal um, opportunity in what's transpiring, you know, within the home. Because um, I just believe in a lot of things that I've seen, you know, as well, um, the impact and the influence that the wife have within um, the home is much greater than anyone can begin to ever imagine. Right, and can ever imagine in the life of her spouse, her children, and 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 so forth. If far excels and far exceeds, so it, it's it's once um, we can come together and see how to make all the gifts work together. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> work together um, without oppressing anything. Everything will be right. so much greater. Yes. So, how, this question here. So what, how would you like to see your business impact the world? Wow. My desire is to see my business impact the world where women are flourishing in all of their, their gifting and in their genius and that they are not conforming to the, uh, I'm going to say, standards that have been sort of set for us. And I use, um, there's two different um, classes that modules that are part of the Ascension Academy. And one is coming out of the matrix mindset. And then the other one is coming out of the religious matrix. And because they are, they do deal with two different mindsets. There is the world system matrix mindset that can prevent us from really soaring to those limitless levels where we as women are making an impact. So I really am passionate about my business helping women to come up and above that. But then I'm very passionate about what I see in our churches, um, mosques, synagogues, religious institutions, where women should also not be in what I call a religious matrix. And you tapped on a lot of this, uh, Durance, but an example is 
where women are told that they cannot speak, they cannot teach God's word, they cannot preach. There are still institutions that do not allow women to do that. They don't allow women to actually operate in those giftings in the religious institutions. There are, are some in the Christian community. Um, I've had conversation with women that say, well, we still don't, we can teach, but we can't stand in front of the congregation, let's say on a Sunday morning. And this is obviously pre-COVID when people were actually in facilities. Um, we're not allowed to minister. There are institutions that do not believe in ordaining or licensing female pastors. And so that's what I mean about the religious matrix, having a true understanding of God's word and having a true understanding of who we are and who we've been created to be uniquely and not placing those limits. So there's those two components that I want my business to be very instrumental in helping women to be 100% free, that they can not only discover their gifting and their genius, but that they will flourish in it, that they will operate in it to the place where we are making a tremendous impact in this world. The world needs us. And in order for us to make that impact, we can't silence people's voices. Um, another um, module is unmask your voice. And unmasking our voice and bringing our voice forward, not to denigrate, not to tear down, not to judge, but to uplift, to inspire, to motivate, to nurture. That is such an important role. And it's important that we understand how critical that role is. You know, when I think about mothers and whether you're rearing um, men, whether you gave birth to your sons or if you're an aunt or a grandmother, a foster parent, an adoptive parent, or you're just a, a woman that is just making a difference in children's lives. With men, I, I, I emphasize in some of my modules how important our fingerprints and our influences are with our young men. And that's because we really help to nurture who they're going to be in this world. What kind of husband are they gonna be? What kind of mate are they going to be? What kind of man overall are they going to be? That nurturing comes from us as women. And it's really important that we understand how powerful that is and that we are actually tuned in and tapped in at a place where as we are ascending and have ascended and have transformed, we are more powerful in our influence. And that's not just helping to raise and rear our men, it's also in corporate, it's the influence that we have. We don't have to sit and take on the, I'll say, um, the style or this mindset that you have to operate a particular way and mirror this masculine, overly masculine energy and that your feminine energy is emotional. That is not true. And so it's really understanding, delving deep and understanding that I can be who I am at my core and I can be extremely successful and I can have a tremendous impact in the world and I'm operating authentically in who I am. And I don't have to lean over into the masculine energy and show up the way somebody told me I need to show up to be successful. I can show up in exactly who God made me to be. And our feminine energy is very powerful. It is extremely powerful. And that's why I, I gave that 
cliche, um, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. We are some very powerful beings. And my business's mission is to help every woman out there, no matter where she is and what phase of her life, because we don't want to assume that somebody's broken. That's another sort of mistake that I believe sometimes we make is that we're trying to fix someone, like something is broken about them. And there doesn't have to be anything broken about us. We're just discovering, transforming, changing our mindset and ascending to a higher place than where we are right now. It's about growth, growth, grow, ascend, ascend, higher, higher, doesn't mean we're broken. But if by chance, there may be some cracks, there may be a couple of, you know, things that need some sealing. We've got some transformational healing. We've got some healing balm that we can apply that will sort of seal any of those cracks, should there be any broken spaces. So I absolutely, absolutely adore. I love that. I want to, I had a, a quick question and then on a transition into um, conversation just about the academy itself. But before we get there, I want to, because you, you said something very, very um, major. And so I want to ask or talk about or ask you to give like two strategies to help women come out of the business or religious matrix mm -hmm. so that they can show up unapologetically um, in, in their greatness. So if you can just provide like two strategies mm -hmm. that will be helpful and um, instrumental in that woman's transition. So the first one that I would say is go on the discovery journey. There is so much that is down in us that we are not aware of. It is very important to go on the discovery journey. And a perfect place to start is to begin to journal what it is that we are feeling. Just begin to take an inventory of what is taking place with us on a daily basis. And then sit back and say, have I been as effective as I could have been? Just start to discover and just question ourselves. Just go on that self-searching journey and ask ourselves that those questions. Just start to journaling is extremely powerful. We know that prayer and meditation is very powerful. And those are obviously two different things. And I encourage people that they do meditate because when we're praying, we're God, God, da, 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 da. But when we are meditating and we are in that quiet space and we're not doing this, talking, we can hear. So the meditation is very important. When that, with that meditation that most people are doing the prayer and meditation, I add journaling is very powerful. It is a great place to start. And some people say, well, I journal every day. But are you praying, meditating, and then hearing, and then journaling? Are you going through that process? That's a good place to start. Um, in the religious matrix, that piece, I would suggest the place to start is analyze everything that we've been taught and begin, because it's okay to question. People say you can't question God. I don't agree with that because I believe that God meets each and every one of us where we are. And I believe that anything that we desire to know, it will be revealed. We seek it out. And there's some things that we are taught about why we can't preach, why we can't speak, why we shouldn't do certain things. The way to start coming out of that matrix is to begin to study deeper. I've heard people quote scriptures and say, well, women gossip, they're emotional. That's why Paul said you need to be quiet. Did anyone, first of all, they are Paul's words 
And this is not to take away from others, uh, writers in the Bible, but they are someone else's words. And those words were interpreted by a particular writer that put them in a particular book. So I encourage people to do their research. I encourage them to begin to study because you will find freedom, you will find power that they may not be tapping into in the moment. That's everything from the faith scriptures to scriptures that tell us what we can and cannot do. Go and research and use more than just one thing. I have a um, King James uh, Bible, I have a Thompson chain, I have a Dakes, I have a Schofield, I have a Torah, and I have a Jewish Bible. And those are two different things, the Torah, but then I have a Jewish Bible. I have a Rasta Bible. I have a Quran. I have a Strong's Bible Dictionary. So I, you, you, this, now this takes some time. It, you, you have to be committed, but if you want to experience true, true freedom, freedom, excuse me, if you want to experience the atmosphere shifting power that God intended for us to be, to have. And if you want to go to those deeper depths and those higher heights of ascending in one's individual life, the studying pays off. So we give, we've got some modules that um, tap on those things and those resources, but these are things that people can do for themselves. So I'm basically saying, study for yourself. For those that are um, scripture, um, I'll say um, familiar, God tells us to study, to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we hear a lot of things thrown out at us, but my question is, do we really understand them? Are we really interpreting them correctly? Because there is so much freedom and so much power, and we can make such a tremendous difference in this world. All we have to do is know who we are, know and understand the power that has been given to us, use it effectively with integrity and in the right manner. Because we can be right, but we may not be effective. And I often say that. So I would say, do that check. You might be right in what you're saying, but are we being effective? And I'll leave this, um, this piece here. The virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. We often throw that out there at women, sort of like a whipping stick sometimes, like it's something you have to measure up to. But listen to what she was doing. She was giving instructions to her son, who was to be a king, and she was instructing him on the characteristics of a good king. When you go and delve into it and do the studying, it's a mother. She's not just talking about what is a good wife, she first, the first instruction in the beginning of that chapter, she's given instruction on what makes a good king. That's a mother. That's a mother giving that sound wisdom to a son. And if we look at things from that perspective, that's a great place to start to see we are these powerful beings and we are meant to do amazing things. So I would just say start with challenging start with saying why who said that and you may find and develop a deeper and a different understanding but absolutely i love it that's why i got to study and show myself approved the word also said if anyone let wisdom ask and god will graciously provide yes. it unto us and studying is absolutely vitally important because even what you was talking about with the um apostle paul listen you have to understand what was happening what was going on um and and, and those things and you got to also look at paul's ministry paul right encouraged women leaders paul worked with women leaders they worked alongside of him 
Mm -hmm. So for, for people to use that to say that women should not be teaching, preaching, or leading, right. then that will contradict. Yes. Uh, that will contradict the ministry mm -hmm. that Paul himself had. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you said when you said, uh, when, when you talked about um, when going deeper, you cannot, we can't take one scripture or a, a section and base the whole theology behind yeah. it. Yes. The, the whole theology behind it. We have to go and look deeper in the word and, and read um, the word full of itself and see what's taking place. What was the themes that, you know, the, that was happening in the life of that particular individual. And then we would discover that Paul worked, supported right um and celebrated yes. um, many women in ministry and in leadership and mm -hmm. so you, we have to look at those things and so that's where the challenging go in and that that's where the challenges um that's why that those are the spaces that you begin to challenge when you yes. under come to understanding of what's in the word right and, and what's happening and things of that nature it will cause you to challenge and you'll say you know what that don't make sense because it don't line up. You got to understand, listen, God had, who was that, Deborah, who yes. was the judge of Israel? Yes. Well, she's led the whole nation, I'm just saying. Yes, <laughs> yes. The whole entire nation. Yes. And there's so many women, and I just believe that there's just so many women like Deborah or alike, right, mm -hmm. that did so much. But it just mm -hmm. so happened, didn't make it. But you can still look at other powerful women mm -hmm. in the in the word who did amazing things. And because they understood who they were, mm -hmm. they definitely made an impact and they definitely influenced nations. Look at um, um, Abigail. Neighbors, my favorite, my right. favorite. Yes, my. <laughs> she had to go against her husband's decision. Yes, just so her household can be safe. But you know, another, another conversation. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes you get me wound up. <laughs> oh, another conversation. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just making some points here. So that we can come into some understanding to know that women are called, you know, to be leaders. And so don't despise your leadership and don't let anyone or anything minimize the leader that's on the inside of you. And so with that being said, it's a great transitioning point to talk about this amazing work um, that you're doing and that you have. You mentioned and you talked about the Revolution um, Ascension Academy or the Ascension Academy. So let's talk about this for a moment because I think it is something that's vitally important so that, that women need to hear about, know about, and partake in so that they can ascend. Let's talk about that. Thank you. Um, the Ascension Academy is the, there's, there's two um, components. There is what we call a taste of the Ascension Academy. And that is for four weeks. And we just kind of, it just kind of runs um, for four weeks and then we take a break and it starts up again. And that's basically a small taste of those areas that I mentioned. Um, a, a taste of what does it really mean going into a deeper level of what does it mean to come out of this matrix um, mindset. And then there's a discovery phase there's a transformational healing phase. And then there's, well, what does it look like when I'm ascending? How do I know I'm ascending? Um, what does that look like? Um, what does that, and it kind of breaks it, um, gives a flavor of um, what we call dimensional living. Um, we know that we're here on this earth, but you know, there's there are mindsets of, are we, overworking? Are we just stressing ourselves out? Are we doing things harder than we need to? Or are we flowing in ease with joy and peace? So there is that. That's a taste of the Ascension Academy. Now, there is a 90-day for folks that want to go for the deep, deep dive. And you're going through the same phases of 
awakening, um, discovery, transformational healing and ascension, but it's over three months and you're going to a deeper level. That means there's far more learning. There's far more, it's all fun because we have a lot of fun. So it's not like, and it's not like where it's boring. There is a lot of fun and we do some really crazy and radical things in our, our workbooks. Um, some things that we utilize music, we utilize film and movies. Um, we utilize real serious, raw and real conversation. We talk about the things that people wanna talk about, but they don't. So we go to that level and we provide a sacred and a safe space for women to really talk about those things that they have kept hidden from the light of day. So there is this tremendous amount of non-judgment zone, sacred safe space to really get free. And you'll still get a, a, a bit of that in the taste of the academy, but the 90 days just takes you on this journey where your outcomes, you can actually see them. Now, this blueprint and this process is something that I went through myself. I didn't wake up one day and, you know, it, it just like, poof, there's Lulu. That didn't happen. It was tough, it was rough. And even in your um, first, uh, not the first book you ever wrote, but in, I'm in one of your uh, compilations and I wrote in those two chapters and people probably read and were like, oh my God, she was really pretty screwed up. And a lot of what I wrote about, I was going through those challenges while I was in ministry and in the church. I wasn't always free. I wasn't always free to flourish to those limitless places, whether it was my career, ministry, or even in my personal life with family. So I'm not giving something that I haven't experienced and come through and actually seeing the outcomes that you will have. So this blueprint and this process that we're, the journey that we're going on, it is a lot of fun, but the outcomes are just you know, I, I have to say they're 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 fabulous. Um, not only did I grow in my career, leaps and bounds, um, promotions, and having worldwide responsibility that allowed me to travel around the world. It allowed me to go and work with a team that I was responsible for in Israel, um, across the UK, in India, Australia. There were so many Germany and France it provided so many opportunities, but I had to go through that process. I had to come through everything that our academy takes you through to see those outcomes. And then there were the outcomes from a ministry perspective. And here's the thing, I'm still growing to this day. Because I teach doesn't mean I don't have a mentor. Because I have a program doesn't mean that I don't sign up for others' programs. So there's this we're, like I said, we're constantly growing, we're ascending, we're transforming, we're on this journey, but the Ascension Academy, whether it's the taste of the Academy or the, the longer in-depth 90 day program is a lot of fun. It's just so much fun. And I love making things fun. I'm a character. Um, I was named Lulu after the endearing cartoon character, mischievous as well as um, endearing because, you know, anyone that's a baby boomer that knew about the cartoon, Little Lulu, there's a phrase in the song that says, Little Lulu, we love Lulu just the same. And the just the same is being eccentric, loud, noisy, always doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So <laughs> it is an experience and I bring, that's who I am authentically at my core. And I bring that eccentric, radical, revolutionary, I bring all of that into what God has given to me as a purpose. So that's pretty much the Ascension Academy. Listen, look, I absolutely love it. So you can either get, so when you were talking, I was thinking about, well, maybe, you know, just get, it's a difference between having a bachelor's 
and a doctorate. <laughs> yes. A bachelor and a doctorate. associates in a in a bachelor's. Right. Want to look at it. Right. Totally, totally different. You get a, a greater, greater, mm -hmm. wider depth um, in that 90 day journey. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just absolutely love it. And I love the experience that you take um, women on. So I, I, we are going to get your contact information and how people can connect with you so they can get information about this. But I do not want to um, end this show without talking about this international experience <laughs> that you are getting, that you're getting ready to take women on. Listen, she said she did retreats. So I'm going to let her introduce it. I'm, I'm excited that it's happening. And, and I just know that women is getting ready to be transformed. And, um, and, and not only just transformed, I think it's going to be a, an amazing awakening as they um, have this international experience that's going to change their lives forever. So let's talk about what you're doing next year <laughs> to help women transform. So our first um, for the first part of, of the year. Um, it's not our first retreat, but this will be the first retreat for 2022. It's going to be in March. And we are going to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. And it's going to be an experience that gives you that, it's going to be condensed. It's going to give you that flavor of what I've described that you would get in a taste of the Ascension Academy um, or the 90 days, but it's gonna be so much fun because it's a retreat. It's not a conference. So you're not gonna be sitting in a room all day. You're gonna be in a relaxed environment in the morning and we're just gonna do some really fun things. But while we're doing that, we're going to you may not even realize that you're changing your mindset, you're getting a deeper understanding, you're discovering some things about yourself, you're actually transforming, but it's done in a way where you're not gonna be bored and you're not gonna be sitting there getting, I'm gonna say death by slides. And what I mean by that is you ever go to something and there's so many PowerPoint slides and you're sitting there like, uh, okay, that's not it. It is a morning full of fun. And then in the afternoon, it is free time. And we do have some excursions that are included. So you will experience the Middle East and the culture there. And I picked Dubai, um, one for a little bit of a selfish reason, I'll confess. I've been there literally six times. <laughs> and the other reason is that when I thought about empowering women, doing things that are fun, and actually experiencing culture from a perspective that is going to be totally different than what you see on TV. We envision things about a culture in our mind because it's what we see on television. Again, we've been given a television. We've been given a vision of something this is experiencing it up close and personal and discovering some things that will give you like, wow, I didn't know that. And it will inspire you. It will motivate you. So one of the things that I noticed with um, being with my peers and the times that I've gone to Dubai, the atmosphere within itself, it, there, there is a freedom in spirit that you experience just in the culture itself. And you literally walk different, you, you feel different. So there's an atmosphere of power just because you're there. And then we're gonna be doing so many fun things that you're gonna come back a totally different person. Your mindset will totally be different and you will definitely be operating in a different dimension if you went one way you will be coming back another way. And it's going to get, be in March, 2022. And the nice part is that this retreat was scheduled for 2020 and COVID hit. And then in 2021, 
We're in touch with the experts. We have close relationships with a lot of these international destinations, simply from the nature that I've traveled to a lot of them so often. And we were told that, you know what? 2022 is really the time to come, first quarter. And so we picked March. We said, well, we got to reschedule because we were going in the fall. And we said, well, we don't want it to be too hot because the climate is very hot. And then we thought about March. March is Women in History Month. And I like to say her story. So I'm not gonna give that part away. You're gonna have to show up, but we have some magnificent things planned. Let's just put it this way. The people here in the US, if you're on this trip, they will know you're in Dubai. They will see that you are being honored and celebrated for your story, her story, during the month of March, if you sign up and attend. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, we're excited because I would not cancel the trip. When COVID hit and folks said, well, just can't, I would not cancel it. And we did have people that had already put their deposits and they had a choice. They could um, receive because this was a pandemic. Now, under normal circumstances, you've given events, we know when you make a commitment to go somewhere, you really don't get a refund. You may be able to move that to another um, event. But when COVID hit, knowing that it was a pandemic, folks had the opportunity to say, you know what, if you want your deposit, you can, you can have your deposits and payments that you've made back. And with all, disclosure and truthfulness. They did not. They said, if you don't cancel it, I'll roll it over to when you're going to go. So we made a commitment that we would one, not go up in price, which we have not. So that's a little risky because we're committed to doing something. And it's almost 18 months later. And we know that pricing fluctuates, but because of our faith and the power of who we are, we know that we have favor. This is part of unleashing our power that we're given. We have favor. So we have left and been able to keep our pricing exactly the same as it was when we announced it in, actually we were going to 2020 in 2019 when we made the announcement and started the registration. So all I can say is that is our first um, uh, for, for the year. That is our um, first global uh, women's uh, reach, empowerment retreat. There will be others, but trust me, they're not going to be like Dubai. That's our big international um, that we're going to do. We're doing it in the first quarter. We don't want to put it out later. We're going to do it in the first quarter. So I think it's something that women are going to enjoy a lot. Yes, you know, I do too. I absolutely um, love it. And I'm telling you guys, you got to, if you've never been to Dubai, you got to go and get the experience. <laughs> go and get the experience. I absolutely love that. Listen, look, there is so much more to share. Okay. And to just learn about all what this amazing woman is doing in her space of influence. We just love the fact that she are helping women ascend globally. And so I want to make sure that you are able to contact her, right? Get on her email list mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you can get in, right? You can get in, you can be informed with all that she is doing. So um, Lulu, can you provide um, the viewers and the listeners with your contact information. Yes, thank you. So um, Dr. Duranche, one of the things I'd like to do for the, the viewers is I want to make sure that they are aware that we give a 30 minute free consult and they can ask anything um, when they sign up for that free consult, they will be emailed a questionnaire. And that questionnaire is, it's, it's a real consult. It's, I'm going to send a questionnaire and they'll be able to um, express the areas um, that they may um, desire some help with. And they can always just, you know, put 
whatever it is that they want to accomplish on there. And in that 30 minutes, we have that conversation and they have an opportunity to ask a lot of questions and really make an informed decision if they want to participate in any of our programs. I don't believe in just throwing stuff out there and people signing up, you know, just trust me, you'll, you'll like it. Um, it gives you that 30 minutes uh, with me to really explore and make sure that you are comfortable with, wow, this is something I want to do. And that's whether you want to be part of the Ascension Academies or any of the retreats that we're having. Now, how you can sign up for that is we have a business Facebook page and it's on, on Facebook, Revolution Ascension. Now we have some closed groups because when you're part of the Academy, things are confidential. So you may see some other things. The clue of knowing if you're on the our, our business page is you will see the button that says book and the calendar will come up right there on Facebook. You can book your 30 minute um, consult call with us. You can also inbox me. Now, you know, email, I, I, I like for people to volunteer um, their email. So to get on the email list, you can go to our website. And if you go to our website, which is www.revolutionascension.com, you can leave your email information and I will definitely get back with you. But a quick and easy way is just to book that 30 minute consult um, and you know, let's just chat and talk. So those are kind of the two ways. They can go to the website and they can uh, leave their email uh, information or they can go and book the consult call. And I'm always publishing what our events are in the Ascension Academy. All that information is on Facebook actually. So our Dubai trip is on Facebook and it also has an event. So there's an event, um, uh, uh, page as well as on our business page. All you have to do is click on the button and the link and it will take you to where there's tons of information. Every question you think you might have will get answered if you click the link on our uh, Facebook page. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Also, if you can't find that, you can go to um, my personal page and you'll and scroll down, you'll see it as well. Um, because I've been sharing the event, <laughs> I've been sharing the event, so it'll definitely get you connected in one form, shape, or fashion. Um, listen, you got to be a part of what's happening. Um, I want to say everything it, look, everything um, that happens in the room is all about the experience, so it's not something that somebody can tell you. It's not something that you could even watch live stream, right? Uh, or anything of that nature. In the room is where it's at. <laughs> In the room is where, where it's at. So you definitely um, want to make sure that you get this the opportunity that if, if it, it is as it is available for you and if you can. Listen, do what you can to get in the room because that is where all the greatness happens, the greatness um show up and the immersion and transformation um take place in the lives of women. So I'm excited about that. Listen, you guys, you have just experienced the build your empire with the kingdom strategist. I am your host, Dr. Duranche. Zorn, your kingdom strategist. I'm so excited that you have been here with us on today. If this message have empowered you, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to our broadcast at www.deronche.com. Again, that's www.deronche.com. So before we completely leave on today, let me also thank this amazing guest, Ms. Jacqueline Lulu Brown, the CEO of Revolution Ascension. Thank you so much for joining us on today. <laughs> thank you. It was my pleasure. Awesomeness. You guys, let's connect on our social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram at Kingdom Strategist, on Twitter at K. Strategist. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategists for a time of building and expanding the kingdom of God within you.